Hello, I'm Doris Sutton. I'm 90 years old and I am dedicated to the idea that a young man in a Florida prison must be freed. South Florida's children, a call to free prisoner Antonio Walter by D.N. Sutton. We are yours, South Florida, your children, nourished on soft air, brilliant hues, mesmerized by sensuous colors, bougainvilleas, hibiscus, framed by wide-sleeved sea grapes. Nurtured in the arms of the Royal Poinciana tree, we live and glory in its orange-red canopies, rejoice in its June celebrations, despite impending summer storm. And who among us who know Florida recalled trees snapped over like matchsticks in the 1926 hurricane? Innocent Miami weeping in shock as the storm serpent invades its Garden of Eden. I remember because I saw it, the devastation, heard the laments, astonished tellings, how Mrs. Russell, my grandmother's friend, watched in terror when seaweed hurled against the sixth floor windows of her Biscayne Bay Hotel, how others cowered in bathtubs, held on to each other tremulously, unsure what hurricane was, what hurricane meant. Florida then was so young, only beginning to awaken to its golden destiny. It seemed naive, as I was then, a young child, six years old, looking back now, so many decades later. I love you, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. But there is a catch in the throat. In your dazzling opulence, glamorous, svelte, so blessed with panache, sweet to the senses, you too have your snake, your serpent, nurturing wrong, a mockery of mercy. Not for us rest, not while an innocent father, Antonio Balt, is trapped in custody, not while we, the favored ones, party in the cocktail hour, smug and assured. For aren't we the social set aligned with the Broward establishment and its well-meaning minions of the law? Imagine how hard it is to be the distinguished lady judge or the dedicated prosecutor trying conscientiously to do a difficult job. No one likes to hear of babies dying in hot cars. We are aghast, appalled. When the press headlines, father gambles while baby dies, isn't it natural to assume that this must be a bad guy? That newspaper accounts are true? But what if news stories are only partly true, despite sincerest effort by careful young reporters? To trying to be accurate, what if impressions are not quite as they seem? What then? What if this uneducated dad who cared for his baby while he groomed horses is not a hard-nosed gambler, but a simple guy who works at the racetrack? Not an indifferent father, but an employee looking for his boss for a reference. Not a criminal, but a distracted young man who placed a bet or two while waiting for his connection. What if he were a clueless father, unaware, like too many others, that when a baby is left alone in a car, disaster looms? Aren't we the educated elite? Our pebbles are cast high on the beach, safe from surf and storm. We are the favored ones, who can sway public opinion. Should we spare ourselves from all participation, be immune to citizen responsibility? For who among us 
in a lifetime of near misses has not erred, who has not unintentionally done wrong when no wrong was intended, who has not at times been plunged into the painful pit of remorse. No drugs, no alcohol involved here, only human error. When we condemn Antonio Balta, aren't we condemning ourselves? How can we leave Antonio Balta incarcerated when other fathers of more elevated social status in professional positions are never arrested or remain free on probation? Doesn't his plight seem morally wrong? A deficiency of decency? Blue collar versus white collar justice? Balz's tragedy of March 13, 2004 was an accident. The sentence of March 21, 2005 may be the crime. In his moving letters, he writes of his baby daughter, Veronica, of sleepless nights remembering her. Punishment won't bring her back, he says ruefully. I miss her so much, but I don't think the law understands my pain. Again and again, he repeats sadly, I did a mistake. In March 2008, Antonio Balta entered the fifth year of his 20-year term. He is no longer the forgotten man because in our astonishing web culture, what once was local and unnoticed becomes global and well-known. If Antonio is remembered today, it is also because Florida Representative Joe Gibbons, a warm-hearted grandfather, is aware of the tragic event that previously occurred in his district. With Florida Senator Mandy Dawson, he has put legislation into effect to warn parents to never leave a child in a car with possible penalty of up to five years in prison. But five years is not 20 years. Walter's too long sentence calls now for review and revision. All people of South Florida, speak up. Speak out. Now, under evolving deportation laws, perhaps Antonio Balta can soon go home to Peru. How wonderful it would be to free this serious, dignified young man, a model prisoner, now a talented master carpenter, who dreams of building houses for the needy here, or if he returns to his homeland. How did our, our resplendent Florida my Florida, our Florida, our beautiful state stumble into this ugly outcome. Perhaps this verdict was also unintentional, an accident of its time, and a media repetition that offered confusing evidence, community inexperience, lack of national overview. F Florida's Garden of Eden does not need a serpent. We stand on the verge of new beginnings, blazing and brilliant, as bright and glorious as the regal plumage of our rejoicing poinciana tree. We too have gifts to offer, compassion, inclusion, gratitude, enough strength to defend moral decency, to release prisoner Antonio Walter. No one can banish hurricanes, but we, South Florida's children, in this, our paradise, can banish the serpent of wrong. Antonio Balta still appears to be the only father in America to have received a 20-year sentence for the accidental death of his baby. Free Balta, contact Governor Christ.